All right, let's dive in. Welcome to the deep dive where we, well, we do a deep dive into all things business and marketing. And today we're going to tackle Facebook ads, specifically how to maximize sales using them. And uh, wow, I got to say, just going through all the research for this from these YouTube marketing masters, it's, it's amazing how much there is to unpack here. Yeah, it can get pretty overwhelming, right? But um, the good news is there are some really solid strategies that these experts all seem to agree on. Uh, we'll definitely be covering those today. Perfect. I'm excited to get into it. Mm. Now, just to give our listeners a little roadmap of where we're headed, we're going to be breaking down the different types of Facebook ad campaigns, uh, talking about the whole debate of targeting, you know, going broad versus getting really specific. And of course, diving into the nitty gritty of crafting those offers that are so good people can't resist them. Oh, and we can't forget those ninja tactics, retargeting, spying on your competitors. There's a lot to cover. There is. But um, I think one of the things that really stood out to me early on in the research was this idea of customer intent. Oh, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. I mean, can you break that down for me a little bit? Because it sounds kind of uh, like a, a bit of marketing buzzword. Well, it's definitely not just a buzzword. It's actually a fundamental concept that uh, once you understand it, it can really change how you approach your ads. So think of it this way. You've got someone just scrolling through Facebook, you know, just killing time. And then you've got someone who is actively searching for a solution to a specific problem they have. Those are two very different levels of intent. So the person just casually scrolling, they might be more drawn to like, a freebie or a discount, something that doesn't require a huge commitment from them. Exactly. Something like get a free quote today or download our free guide. They're more likely to click on something low commitment because, well, they're not really looking for anything specific. But the person who's actively searching, they're already in that buying mindset, right? Yeah, they're further down the sales funnel, so to speak. Yeah. They're more likely to click on an ad that takes them directly to a product page or a booking form. They're ready to take action. Okay, so that makes sense. But then how do we tie this whole intent thing back to the different types of Facebook ad campaigns? So you've got your lead generation campaigns, your message campaigns, and your conversion campaigns. Lead generation is all about, well, generating leads. You're offering something of value in exchange for their contact information. Like an ebook or a webinar or something like that. Right. And those are great for capturing people who are maybe in the early stages of awareness. They might not be ready to buy just yet, but they're interested enough to learn more. Okay. And then what about message campaigns? Those are more about starting a conversation with potential customers through Facebook Messenger. You can use them to answer questions, provide support, or even qualify leads before you try to sell them anything. Interesting. So it's a more personalized approach. Yeah. It's all about building relationships. And then finally, we have the conversion campaigns. This is where you're trying to get people to take a specific action like making a purchase or booking an appointment, you're sending them to a landing page that's specifically designed to convert them into paying customers. So for our listeners who are, say, landscaping companies, mm -hmm. they might use a conversion campaign to send people to a page where they can request a free quote for landscaping services. Exactly. And because these people are already further down the funnel, they have higher intent. You can be a little more direct with your offer. Okay. This is all starting to click for me now. But there's one thing that um, that one of the experts said that really stuck with me. Oh, yeah. What was that? He was talking about, like, hoops and loops. Hoops and loops. I don't remember that one. Okay. So he was basically saying the more hoops you make someone jump through, the higher their intent needs to be for them to actually convert. Oh, right. Right. Like, if you're asking them to fill out a long, complicated form, they're probably not going to do it unless they're really, really interested in what you're offering. Exactly. So it's all about finding that sweet spot between making it easy for people to convert, but also, you know, making sure that the people who are converting are actually qualified leads. Right. You don't want to waste your time and money on people who aren't serious about buying from you. This is great stuff. Uh, I feel like we're already getting into some really actionable strategies here. Now, one thing I wanted to bring up, because I know there's a lot of debate about this, is this whole idea of targeting. You know, should you go broad? Or should you get really specific with your audience? Oh, yeah, that's a big one. I mean, some of the experts we looked at, they were all about letting Facebook's algorithm do the heavy lifting. Just target broadly and let Facebook figure out who's most likely to be interested in your offer. 
Makes sense. I mean, Facebook's algorithm is pretty sophisticated these days. It really is. But then on the other hand, you had other experts who were like, no way, you got to be super specific with your targeting. Oh, really? So like <laughs> down to the zip code level. Yeah. They were talking about targeting people based on their interests, their demographics, their behaviors, even targeting people who follow your competitors. Oh, that's getting pretty strategic. Yeah. I remember one guy, he was talking about how he basically spammed this one specific neighborhood with his ads. Oh, yeah. And it worked. He said it worked like a charm. He got tons of new clients just from targeting that one little area. That's awesome. It is. But um, mm -hmm. it also makes you think, like, what's the right approach for your business? Do you go broad and trust the algorithm? Or do you get really granular and laser focused? It's a tough question. I think it really depends on your industry, your budget, your goals, mm -hmm. and, you know, how comfortable you are with experimenting. That's a great point. I think for anyone listening, it's definitely worth testing out both approaches and seeing what works best for you. Definitely. And don't be afraid to adjust your strategy as you go. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about intent. We've talked about targeting. Now let's get into the good stuff, the actual offers themselves. Okay, so this is where things get really interesting, right? Yeah, because I think a lot of businesses make the mistake of just listing their services. Mm. You know, like we offer landscaping, lawn care, and snow removal. Right, but that's not really an offer. It's just a statement. Yeah, it's not very compelling, is it? Not at all. You need to give people a reason to choose you over your competitors. So what are some examples of offers that actually work? Okay, so one that I really liked, it was from this landscaping company that was offering 15% off interlock with every 100 square feet of sod installation. Ooh, that's smart. Bundling services like that. Yeah, and it adds value for the customer, too. They're getting a discount on something they might already be planning to purchase. I like that. I also remember one company, they were offering free stone restoration with every garden pathway they installed. Oh, that's a good one, too. Yeah, so it's about getting creative and finding ways to sweeten the deal. And don't forget about scarcity and urgency. Those are your secret weapons for creating that I need this now feeling. So like this month only mm. or limited time offer. Exactly. People are more likely to take action if they feel like they're going to miss out on something. Now, here's a question for you, because I know this is something that some people debate. Should you actually reveal the price in your Facebook ads? That's a tricky one. I mean, some experts say it's best to be upfront and transparent about your pricing so people know what to expect before they even click on your ad. Yeah, I can see the logic in that. But then other experts say that it's actually better to keep the price a secret at least initially. Really? Why is that? It's all about piquing their curiosity. You want them to click on your ad to learn more, and if they know the price up front, they might decide it's not worth their time. Ah, so it's about creating that intrigue. Exactly, it's like, what's behind door number one? I like that analogy. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about intent, targeting, crafting irresistible offers. Now let's move on to something that I think a lot of our listeners are gonna be really excited about. The secret sauce, the magic formula, the hum, mm -hmm. the 40-40-20 rule. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. This is something that all of the top Facebook advertisers seem to agree on. And it's all about allocating your effort strategically, right? Exactly. So 40% of your effort should go into audience research. Okay, so really understanding your target market. Yeah, their pain points, their desires, their fears, their frustrations. What keeps them up at night? Precisely. And then another 40% goes into crafting that killer offer we were just talking about. Right, making it irresistible. So what about the remaining 20%? That's where your creative comes in. The copywriting, the visuals, the overall design of your ad. But here's the thing that really resonated with me. One of the experts said, I'm going to quote him here because it's just so good. He said, customers don't buy when they understand. They buy when they feel understood. Whoa, that's deep. Right. It's so true. It's not just about logic. It's about emotion. Yeah. So even if you have the most beautiful ad in the world, if it doesn't connect with your audience on an emotional level, it's not going to work. It's all about tapping into their feelings and making them feel like you truly get them. And you know what? Speaking of feeling understood, I actually wanted to share something with our listeners. Mm. If you're looking to, you know, really maximize your marketing efforts, there's this amazing resource. It's from a guy named Brian Garvin. That's Brian with an I. Okay, Brian with an I. Yeah, so it's briangarvin.com. And he has this free guide called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Wow, that sounds super helpful. It is. It's over 12,300 words of like pure marketing gold. 12,300 words. That's a lot of information. I know, right? But it's all really actionable stuff. You can grab it for free. Just submit your name and email on his website. 
And uh, the link is actually in Brian's YouTube bio, too. Oh, perfect. So anyone listening can just head over there and check it out. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so back to Facebook ads. We were talking about the 40-40-20 rule and how important it is to really understand your audience, mm -hmm. to craft that irresistible offer, and to create ad creatives that connects with them on an emotional level. And to always be testing and tweaking your approach. Yes. That's so important. Because what works for one business might not work for another. And what worked last year might not work this year. Exactly. The Facebook ads landscape is constantly changing. You got to stay on top of your game. Always be learning. Always be experimenting. And never be afraid to ask for help. That's great advice. All right. Well, I think that's a great place to wrap up part one of our Facebook ads deep dive. Make sure to tune in next week for part two, where we'll be diving even deeper into some advanced strategies like retargeting and competitive analysis. It's going to be good. It is. So until then, happy advertising, everyone. See you next time. All right. So picking up where we left off, um, I think it's a good time to talk about the power of storytelling and Facebook ads, you know, specifically those testimonial ads. Oh, yeah. Those, those can be really effective when they're done right. But I've also seen some that are just like cringy and don't really land. Exactly. It's all about how you present them. Luckily, the experts we've been learning from, they've got a pretty solid formula for crafting testimonial ads that really hook people in. Okay, I'm all ears. What's the secret? It's all about telling a story, you know? A story that resonates with your target audience on an emotional level. So it's not just about slapping a quote on a pretty picture. No, no, no. It's going to be more than that. Think of it like a mini-movie with a beginning, middle, and end. Okay, I like where this is going. So step one is to call out your specific audience right off the bat. You know, make them feel seen and heard, like, hey, busy moms who are struggling to find time for themselves or, you know, whatever your target audience is. So for our landscaping example, it might be something like tired of that patchy weed infested lawn that you can never seem to get under control. Perfect. You're speaking directly to their pain point. Yeah. And you're making them feel like you understand their struggle. Exactly. And then step two is to dive deeper into that problem. You know, paint a vivid picture of what their life is like with this problem. Use relatable details. Evoke those emotions. So you might say something like, you work so hard to keep your lawn looking nice, but no matter what you do, those weeds just keep coming back. Or you're embarrassed to have people over because your yard is such an eyesore. Yeah, exactly. You're really tapping into their frustration and their desire for a solution. And then step three is where you introduce your product or service as the solution. But you do it in a natural, organic way. It's not a hard sell. It's more like a, hey, here's how we helped someone just like you overcome the same problem. So instead of just saying we install high quality sod, you might say something like, Imagine hosting barbecues on your lush green lawn, feeling the soft grass beneath your feet, watching your kids play freely without worrying about prickly weeds. Yes. You're painting a picture of the life they desire. The transformation they're craving. Exactly. And then finally, you end with a clear call to action. Like, get your free quote today or transform your lawn this spring. Book your consultation now. Perfect. You're telling them exactly what you want them to do. This is such a great formula. It takes what could be a boring testimonial mm -hmm. and turns it into like a mini movie that people actually want to watch. And it works because it's relatable, it's emotional, and it's aspirational. Okay, so we've talked about crafting those irresistible offers, and now we've got this awesome formula for creating compelling testimonial ads. But um, I know a lot of our listeners are probably wondering, okay, how do I actually scale my Facebook ads? How do I take what's working and make it even bigger? Ah, uh, scaling. The holy grail of Facebook advertising. But um, it's not as simple as just throwing more money at your ads and hoping for the best. Yeah, I was going to say, there's got to be more to it than that. There definitely is. In fact, one of the biggest mistakes businesses make is scaling too quickly or scaling the wrong campaigns. So what's the right way to scale? Well, first and foremost, you only want to scale campaigns that are already winning. Okay, so you got to have a, a solid foundation to build on. Exactly. If a campaign isn't performing well at a smaller scale, it's not going to magically start performing well just because you increase the budget. Makes sense. And then, even with winning campaigns, it's important to scale gradually. Don't just go from a $500 budget to a $5,000 budget overnight. Whoa. Yeah, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. It can be. You need to allow your campaign's time to stabilize after each increase. So you might start by increasing your budget by 10% or 20% and then monitor the results closely. 
So you're looking at things like your cost per result, making sure that it's still within your acceptable range. Exactly, because you can actually end up losing money if you scale too aggressively. One of the experts actually gave a really helpful example. He was talking about how a campaign might start with a $500 budget and a cost per result of $10. And then as they scale, they gradually increase the budget while keeping a close eye on that cost per result. And they might find that at a certain point, the cost per result starts to creep up. Maybe it goes from $10 to $12, then to $15. And at that point, they know it's time to pull back on the scaling. Right, because they've hit that tipping point where it's no longer profitable to keep scaling. This is so important. It's not just about chasing bigger numbers. It's about making smart decisions based on data. Couldn't agree more. And speaking of data, there are a ton of other advanced strategies that we can use to really dial in our Facebook ads. Oh, yeah. Give me the good stuff. Okay, so first up, we've got retargeting. Retargeting. Refresh my memory on what that is again. So retargeting is all about reaching people who have already interacted with your business in some way. They've visited your website. They've liked your Facebook page. They've maybe even added something to their cart but didn't complete the purchase. So it's like giving them a gentle nudge. Exactly. You're reminding them of what they might be missing. And the cool thing about retargeting is that you can get really specific with your audiences. So like you could create an audience of people who visited a specific page on your website. Yeah. Or people who abandoned their cart or people who watched a certain percentage of one of your videos. So many possibilities. I know, right? It's a really powerful tool. Okay. What else? Another strategy that I really like is called the omnipresence content strategy. Okay, that sounds interesting. So it's less about targeting specific actions and more about just being present in your target audience's newsfeed. So like building brand awareness. Yeah, and building relationships. You're yeah. consistently showing up with valuable content, helpful tips, behind the scenes glimpses into your business, maybe even some humor. So for our landscaping example, we might share videos about seasonal gardening tips mm -hmm. or advice on choosing the right plants for your yard. Exactly. You're providing value, establishing yourself as an expert. And building that, yeah, like, and trust factor. Right. And then when someone is finally ready to hire a landscaper, guess who they're going to think of? The company that's been consistently providing them with helpful information and, and entertaining content. Exactly. Okay, this is all great stuff. But I'm sensing that you've saved the best for last. Well... I don't know about best, yeah. but it's definitely the most strategic. <laughs> We're talking about competitive analysis, right? Zingo. The spying. Shh. Don't say it so loud. <laughs> but seriously, how do we do this ethically? It's actually really easy. Facebook has this feature built in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so all you have to do is go to one of your competitor's ads, click on the three dots in the upper right corner, and select, why am I seeing this ad? And that's it? That's it. And it tells you everything. Well, not everything, but it gives you some really valuable insights into their targeting strategy. You'll see the demographics they're going after, the interests they're targeting, even the types of ad creative they're using. So we can see if they're targeting homeowners versus renters, people interested in organic gardening, yeah. people who follow specific landscaping pages. Exactly, and you can analyze their ad copy, their visuals, their calls to action, What's working for them? Yeah. What could be improved? It's like having a cheat sheet for Facebook ad success. But completely ethical. I love it. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. We've talked about retargeting, omnipresence content strategy, competitive analysis. But um, before we move on, I just want to reiterate something that we touched on earlier. The Facebook ads landscape is constantly changing. It's true. What worked last year might not work today. Algorithms change, user preferences shift, new features pop up all the time. So how can our listeners stay ahead of the curve? Continuous learning is key. Subscribe to industry blogs, listen to podcasts like this one, check out webinars, online courses. And, you know, speaking of valuable resources, I can't recommend Brian's free affiliate guide enough. It's called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, and you can download it at briangarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. That's a great resource. And Facebook itself also offers a ton of great information through their Blueprint courses and their Ads Help Center. So many options. It's all about staying curious, testing, experimenting, and being willing to adapt your strategies as needed. Exactly. All right. I think we've given our listeners a lot to chew on. Let's take a step back and distill some key takeaways. What are the most important things they should remember as they embark on their Facebook ads journey? So many takeaways. I know, right? Where do we even begin? Well, I think the biggest thing is to remember that Facebook ads, they're really about connecting with real people, 
not just algorithms and data. It's not just about throwing money at a screen and hoping for the best. Exactly. You got to understand your audience, their desires, their pain points, what makes them tick. You got to build those relationships, you know? Yeah. Not just transactions. 100%. And that's why that 40% we talked about investing in audience research, it's so important. Seriously. I mean, that quote we mentioned earlier, customers don't buy when they understand, they buy when they feel understood. Powerful stuff, right? It really is. It's about tapping into those emotions, building that trust. And speaking of emotions, think back to those testimonial ads we were talking about, the ones that are structured like mini stories. Those work because they resonate with us on a deeper level. They make us feel seen. And once you really understand your audience, then it becomes so much easier to craft those offers that they can't resist. Right. You know what their pain points are. You know what they're looking for. So you can tailor your offer to meet their specific needs. Exactly. Like the landscaping examples we talked about. Bundling services, creating that scarcity with limited time offers. It's all about adding value and speaking directly to their desire. Oh, and don't forget about those clear calls to action. So important. Tell people exactly what you want them to do. Don't leave them guessing. Now, we also talked about scaling, but with a word of caution. Yeah, scaling can be tricky. It's not just about throwing more money at your ads. Nope. You gotta analyze your data, understand your cost per result. Make sure you're not overspending to acquire a customer. It's all about being strategic. And remember, the Facebook ads landscape is always changing, so you gotta stay on top of your game. Continuous learning is key. Podcasts, industry blogs, webinars, courses. Oh, and of course there's Brian's free affiliate guide, 10 steps to becoming a super affiliate. You can download it at briangarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. It's a fantastic resource. Yeah. All right. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's the one message you want to leave our listeners with? Hmm. That's a good question. I think the most important thing to remember is effective Facebook advertising is about connecting with your audience on an emotional level. It's about understanding their needs and providing solutions that genuinely improve their lives. Exactly. And when you approach it with that mindset, the possibilities are limitless. Beautifully said. So for all our listeners out there, as you embark on your Facebook advertising journey, remember to stay curious, stay creative, and most importantly, stay focused on building those genuine connections. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into Facebook ads and feel inspired to take your campaigns to the next level. And don't forget to check out Brian's free guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of pure marketing gold, available at briangarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. Thanks for listening, everyone. See you next time.